Of course, when you learn design, you don't learn it all at once. It's not really a holistic thing. So we think of four levels of design learning. Understanding design, which is being able to recall what you learn, define, explain, give examples to others. This is really critical that you understand what you're doing before you proceed to the design cycle. Applying, which is using the information to accomplish something. You need to do something with what you know. As you get more advanced in design, you're able to analyze what you do, extract meaning from collections of information. And at the highest level of design, you should be able to create something new under given constraints to achieve a near optimal outcome. But notice this, which we think about designing, is really the highest level. It's very difficult, and it's going to take a lifetime of practice before you master this art of design, which really defines what an engineer is. So let's think about going from ideas to actuality, going through the multiple iterations of this, of this design cycle. And I, I have a quote from Thomas Edison here, which says, opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overhauls and looks like work. And there's a lot of truth to that. The design is time consuming. It's difficult. You need to really focus on it. And if you go from an idea to something like an automated brewery system that's over on the left, when you start off doing this, your idea is actually very fuzzy. You don't really know what you want. The problem is not defined in your head. And we talked about this in the last little lecture. And over time, what happens is your idea begins to clarify as you go through multiple iterations of this design process. And there are several tools available that make the process work better, work more quickly. And this is really how you learn design and how you do design. And what's really important about the class is being able to use these tools in a masterful way. One of them, which we'll talk about in the future, is functional decomposition or a block diagram. Breaking a system down into its functional parts, um, not just by what they look like, but by what they do, and understanding how these things connect together in a way that satisfies physics and design and engineering and the needs of the user. A second one is the issue of time. The longer it takes to do multiple iterations of this design process, the more money it costs, because time is money, and thinking about the speed by which you go through the process is critically important. There are several tools that can aid you in doing these. One of these, which is a Gantt chart, which we'll learn and talk about later on. Another one is the project manager, the person who balances costs and schedules and specifications of your project. And having a good project manager, somebody whose profession it is to manage projects, is very, very useful to you as an engineer because it allows you to focus on what you do best, engineering systems and engineering design. I'd like to end this with some results of a survey we did at Oklahoma State University about what faculty think are important and what faculty actually assigned students to do in their classes. And I'd like to point out that the two things that are most important by faculty, or the three things, are communicating, which is by far the most important thing, faculty, uh, the most important aspect of design, according to what faculty who are experts themselves think, followed by modeling and researching. Um, and one may think that communicating is really not a part of engineering, but I would argue it's probably the most important part of engineering. Um, the blue bars, which represent the actual work students do, as opposed to the brown bars, which is the importance faculty think, show that students are generally given the least work in researching and communicating, which are among what faculty think are the most important skills. So if you need to work on something in your design class, and if your school is at all like ours, um, the place where you need to most develop your skills are in professional communicating and on how to do research. And in my experience, I found that teams that do a good job researching succeed in their design at a much higher rate and have a much easier time doing it.